Did someone from Kyiv actually say that Moscow was protecting residents of Ukraine's Donbass? Did an official U.S. delegation condemn NATO actions in the Black Sea? And where did that robot in Russia really come from? We break all this down today here at Stop Fake, the place where we debunk Russian disinformation and set the record straight about Ukraine. I'm Marco Supran, so let's get to it. This week, several pro-Kremlin publications declared that Ukraine admitted that Moscow was really protecting the residents of Russian-occupied Donbass. Ukraina.ru and Luga News wrote that Kyiv recognizes that Russian President Vladimir Putin's May 1st decree to make it easier to get Russian passports for Donbass residents is aimed at protecting the citizens of his country. And this admission is attributed to Ukraine's Deputy Minister for the Occupied Territories, Yuri Hrimchak. Well, as usual, Russian media completely distorted what Hrimchak actually said. Appearing on a Channel 5 Ukrainian television program, Hrimchak explained that Putin's decree is intended to legalize its aggression against Ukraine on the basis of protecting its citizens and to legalize the self-proclaimed Donetsk and Luhansk People's Republic's militants, giving them protection from Ukrainian courts in the future. Ukrainian citizens who are part of the occupying military formations are collaborators, Hrimchak said. Russian passports are first and foremost intended for them. Employees of the Donbass Occupation Administration will also be the first to receive these Russian passports. Hrimchak said, when UN peacekeepers arrive in the Donbass, what will these people who have blood on their hands do? They will simply go to Russia, officially as Russian citizens. If residents of the Donbass choose to take Russian citizenship, their Ukrainian citizenship should be annulled, Hrimchak also said. And he pointed out that Ukrainians could risk losing their Ukrainian citizenship as the Ukrainian constitution only recognizes Ukrainian citizenship. Pro-Kremlin media disseminated stories this week claiming that a U.S. delegation visiting Crimea had expressed concern about NATO's actions in the Black Sea and that this was the view of the international community. Bruce Gagnon, one of the organizers of the delegation's trip to Russian annex Crimea, who criticized NATO's presence in the Black Sea, is notorious for some of his earlier statements, such as calling the 2014 Maidan revolution a coup sponsored by the United States and claiming that the tragic events in Odessa back in May of 2014, in which 50 people people died in clashes between pro-Russian and pro-Ukrainian groups were caused by Ukrainian Nazis, of course. Bruce Gagnon identifies himself as a political peace activist. He is also the coordinator of something called the Global Network Against Weapons and Nuclear Power in Space. Russian media referred to him as the head of the American delegation visiting Crimea. Gagnon said the U.S. is being dangerously arrogant by walking away from treaties with Russia and that they want to dominate the world in space. Gagnon and his group marched in the May Day Parade in Simferopol, the capital of occupied Crimea, carrying a banner reading, No to NATO, keep space for peace. Besides voicing his displeasure with NATO, Gagnon also declared that residents of Crimea were happy people because they got what they voted for in the annexation referendum, and that the U.S. was demonizing Russia, and that U.S. sanctions against Russia should be lifted. It should come as no surprise that his views on Ukraine coincide with the Kremlin line. Gagnon has also said the U.S. is preparing to start a war in space, that the September 11 terrorist attacks were orchestrated by the American government and other conspiracy theories. Now, the U.S. Embassy in Ukraine has said that Mr. Gagnon's delegation is in no way connected to the U.S. government and the United States continues to stand on the side of Ukraine in the fight against Russian aggression. In his blog post about his trip to Crimea, which he calls a study tour that included a swing through Moscow and St. Petersburg, Gagnon writes that he, quote, came to Russia to listen and learn in order to stand against the constant demonization of this nation by the Western corporate-dominated countries, especially the U.S. Just like with other international delegations visiting Crimea, this American group is not an official delegation, just several private citizens who neither represent a country, nor a government, nor any international organization. And finally, a fake that Russia has perpetrated against itself. It involves Russia's Vladimir Putin, a group of military cadets, and Russian-created robotics, except they weren't created in Russia. 
Our colleagues at EU versus Disinfo had a bit of fun this week debunking RIA Novosti's coverage of President Putin's visit to the specialized military Suvorov boarding school for boys in St. Petersburg. RIA Novosti stressed that one of the young students had been demonstrating his own invention. The problem was, however, that the robot had not been invented at the school and it wasn't even Russian. The independent news portal Znak was the first to report about RIA Novosti's mistake, quoting Russian social media users who had quickly identified the robot as a Korean-made toy anyone can purchase on Amazon for just over $1,000. It's not the first time Kremlin-controlled media made awkward claims on the topic of robots and other forms of high-tech. In December 2018, State TV Russia 24 presented a man in a suit as one of the most advanced robots. Russia 24 also showed screenshots from a promotional video for a computer game called AC-130 Gunship Simulator Special Ops Squadron as irrefutable proof that the U.S. provides cover for ISIS combat troops. Another state TV channel Pervi Kanal broadcast images of alleged battle scenes from Syria, which turned out to be taken from the computer game Arma 3. You kind of wonder why didn't Ria Novosti fact check the information about the allegedly Russian robot in the first place? Or maybe you just don't dare ask too many questions if the president himself is at the center of a disinformation story. That's it for this week. You can find much more dissected disinformation on the Stop Fake website. Be vigilant, look out for fakes, and if you spot any disinformation about Ukraine, forward it to us for a truth autopsy. I'm Marco Supran, and this is Stop Fake. Thanks for watching.